Welcome back everybody, I hope you're doing well. This week I thought I would go through how to create just a really beautiful perfected complexion and kind of go back to basics rather than sort of doing a look per se because I sort of do makeup that's sort of everyday makeup, not that something that's maybe polished or for an event, um, just to kind of make it real and relatable I suppose, but it's quite nice to go back and sort of refine our skills if you're going to an event or you've got a big presentation or whatever it might be. Maybe you just want to look amazing. Um, there are a few little tips that I would like to kind of readdress with you and just kind of um, show you how to make the best out of your skin and try and cover sort of all different skin types as well. Um, I've been trying on red lipsticks this morning. <laughs> um, it's a really nice new Fenty one that I'll talk to you about. So it's given me a nice kind of like tint to my lip, which is lovely. A little bit of brow and mascara on just because I felt a little bit sleepy this morning and my face just wasn't, what do they say, snatching into action. Um, but then I think I need to have like a nice high ponytail. Anyway, <laughs> right. Okay, so if we just kind of go back to basics, skincare is so important in terms of creating a really beautiful, long-lasting, natural-looking skin when fusing it with makeup, or just a great-looking skin anyway. The two do come together to make sure that the makeup sits properly. You've heard that a trillion times before. But what a lot of people tend to forget is the part of exfoliation. Um, as we get older, the cell turnover on our skin slows down, I think, after the age of 25. Don't quote me on that, it's around then. Um, but if you're tired and central heating and dry atmosphere, blah, 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 that all kind of um, prevents the skin from kind of renewing itself as quickly as a beautiful, the beautiful skin of an eight-year-old child. I mean, they are angelic, aren't they? The skin, if you look at a young, gorgeous child's skin, it's just angelic, as I said. <clears throat> it's almost deeply translucent. So we need to kind of try and, I always say, be the personal trainer to our skins and kind of just give it a boost. I'll stop rabbiting. So there are, it's one product that I've just, and it's not a new product. I did mention it on my Instagram the other day. Um, Cause I actually got it for one of my sons to help with just a little bit of beard irritation to help the ingrowing hairs. Um, it's Fenty Skins, Fenty Beauty Pre Show Glow. Comes in a box like this. Um, and I had got it a while ago for my kit, but I'm just always really nervous if I cause a reaction on someone's skin um, before I do their makeup. So I kind of tend to go really gentle. Um, this has got 10% AHA in, but even though that's quite a high percentage, um, it really felt very beautiful on the skin. So you dampen the square. I'm not going to do it now because I don't have a sink around me and blah, blah, blah. You don't need me to actually properly demonstrate. I know you don't. You've got great imaginations. You dampen the, the little um, mitt, which is slightly abrasive. It's like a loafer in texture, but much softer. So it's not, it's not going to damage or scratch your skin because you don't want that. The reason it's really great to exfoliate your skin is that just, and I've said this before, imagine... Um, when light hits something smooth, it bounces back off. Sunlight hits a piece of glass, metal, bounces off. But if it hits something that's very texturized, then it just shatters and it's not reflective. And it's the same for your skin. So just remember that a nice smooth skin will help it look much more radiant. So you pop it on and then you spend a couple of minutes, wherever you want, just really kind of helping the exfoliation process. And then you've got obviously the physical side and then you've got the chemical side. And then you really soak it in water and then you rinse it off and it kind of goes into this little foam. The skin feels lovely. It's a really, really lovely product. Um, so that is one fantastic liquid exfoliant. I've talked about lots of my favorite ones before. Again, I can go through a detailed version if you want more detail, you want me to do more segments or you just prefer the looks. I'm curious, what do you prefer? Um, and the other one, the other product, liquid exfoliant that I really recommend that is super gentle is from Medicaid, a brand that I love. And my mum's blooming nicked it because I had it on the side here. I had a refill because it comes with a little pump, which I love. You know, when you put the cotton wool on, it's very satisfying. And it's gone. And that is the only explanation. Um, it's the Medicaid um, polyhydroxy acid, PHA. 
um, and again it's super super gentle on the skin but it does the same effect and you can use it daily but my mum's got really sensitive skin so she prefers to use that and that's the one that hasn't irritated her skin at all so great exfoliants and then I want to talk about masks I have a few favorite masks and a few new ones to share so these are what I would often use at work these are the hydrophil deep hydration marks from Dr Tina Mida um, she's an amazing dermatologist, I met her through lockdown actually, and her products are really, really efficient and effective, as you would expect. These have got little hooks around the ears, and they just make it really easy for me to get that hydration in and someone can busy themselves and not have it falling off. Sometimes a lot of the masks don't stay on. And these ones, and the Shiseido ones, are really, really good for that. The Shiseido ones always, I've just literally used my last one of my client yesterday, that's why I don't have it. Um, have a really great lifting effect as well from the neck. I'll try and get some in for next week, but they're a real treat. Um, another brand that I love is Soilista, um, and they do a wonderful selection of masks. This is the Rosy Glow Primer, and that's really, really great. And your skin just feels vibrant and alive. And this super hydration is just incredible. It's really lovely. Sometimes people say, you know, put your mask on at night, and I totally understand that, but it's quite nice to do your mask in the morning because then you can just enjoy your hydration of your skin throughout the day. Um, and it is such a lovely treat. It's definitely something you could possibly squeeze in twice a week if you could. Another new product, woohoo, literally did yesterday. Um, this is Lumi Glow. Again, a really, really deeply hydrating mask. Um, I can always I just get rid of the ones that I don't like when I just don't still have enjoyment and I don't feel the hydration like three hours afterwards. Because if you're going to you know, do it for 20 minutes, you want to have some effect 20 minutes later. Lumi Glow, really, really lovely brand and they're all about hydration. And then <clears throat> at work the other day, the hairdresser that I was working alongside with, he does a lot of male grooming like big famous boys. And he had these. Bro masks. Now I have sons and um, they do get spoiled for their skincare. I'm trying to teach them to look after the skin as much as they can. It's obviously hard being teenagers, isn't it? And I know it's all in the marketing. Of course it's all in the marketing. But, you know, bro masks, they do. It's American. Um, Jackson Lane. I don't know the company. Um, he just gave it to me. I said, oh, please let me put that in a film before you use it. Um, and he said, what's great is that they're clear, especially the eye masks are clear. So the guys put the eye mask on and put their sunnies on and you can't tell that they've got something on their face before they go to a show or whatever. Um, and yeah, so really firming, lovely. But if, you want, if you've got someone in your life that would, make, that would make them laugh, I thought that was a really good little beauty treat for someone. Okay, so I've got all that on my face. I've got all my hydration on. I'm, ha I'm good to go. I would probably take a little bit of a cotton pad and just very gently just absorb with an essence um, my, uh, the residue from the mask because you need to be careful if you're going straight in with makeup that you don't get any pilling and that's if you have excess product on. So I'd probably do just like a little bit of a facial spritz, even just using Evian. Uh, water spray from the tin from the can and just remove the excess with the tissue so I had my moisturizer on and my SPF but just because I'm going to start again in with the makeup I'm going to use the Boom Boom Milk um, from Violette which again is just wonderful really easy on the go actually that'd be really good for travel this actually on the aeroplane because it's got the pre and probiotic and it's just again so hydrating and I know I'm applying it with my fingers now but as you're having to put some, your fingers into a pot or anything else it just makes it very very easy so another dose of hydration before um, oh by the way do you like the jumper <laughs> it's a really lovely jumper I wonder whether I could sort of show you it's got all these lovely holes and little tassels in um, my friend works for uh, monsoon and she said oh, I've got a lovely warm cream because you know your friend Anna was talking about colours this is the perfect colour for you and it really is a lovely colour it's a really perfect warm winter cream um, and the shape and cut is really nice so yeah just thought I'd share it with you it's a really nice wintry colour so I really don't feel like wearing blacks and dark colours at the moment I think it's that kind of thing of like oh my god I just need to keep my chipper up and uh, wear things that kind of make me feel a bit more woohoo rather than ooh. So you know what I mean. Right, so 
If I'm creating a base that I know that I need to last, my favourite um, sort of demi matte base is Ambient Hourglass. Um, this is the Soft Glow. It come in lots of different shades, it come in glass bottles, it's a bit annoying for my kit. Um, but for me personally, I absolutely love this. And the reason that I don't use a super glowy one is because I need it to last and I'll add the glow where I want to add it. I'm going to start with 5.5. Um, just a little bit on the back of my hand to start with. And I will probably start with my fingers just to really get it onto the skin. And then I will start to buff away. But you can see, literally, I've already I put the squirt on the back of my hand. You only the tiniest amount. And I always misjudge this base. But what's great is that once it's on, you can then build up and build up. So I'll just take it all over. Doesn't matter if I can clean up my mole in a minute. Um, it's a really good layering one, but it just perfects the skin without making my skin look older and drier. It really gives that flawless finish, but it doesn't feel heavy at all. Um, and I just thought I must share this with my Speed Beauty buddies because it's a really, really lovely base. So if you're next in Space NK or wherever you happen to see Hourglass, try and get someone to maybe give you a demonstration with it. There's lots and lots of shades. Um, but I think it needs someone to show you how to put it on. So I push it in like that, but you can still see it, okay? So you'll need to get a buffing brush. So let me use the um, Otis Battersby 101. Now I've got like flat foundation brushes here, the duo fibre, but because I want to buff and soften, you just go for something that kind of gives you that soft whiskey effect because I don't want to remove it, right? That's the thing is that a lot of people put on their foundation and they either only get half the application because most of it goes into the brush or they remove it completely by doing too much. So it's really important to make sure that you're not ruining your makeup by using the wrong brush, as in minimizing it. Don't be, as she goes and uses the wrong brush. So to be concise about that, just use a soft fluffy brush to make sure that it helps to melt into the skin and then go back again. So I'm going to go into my forehead and just smooth out that irregularity. And if you use a semi-matte base as well, it stops you from having to put on too much powder because people get so confused like the glow and it's really lovely, you know, I know how, my, how I love my skin to glow in certain places, all over sometimes. But then if you're maybe having lots of zooms or you're in bright lights or you're being filmed, whatever, you're then gonna have to really put quite a lot of powder or mattifying products on your skin. So it's always good to start with the um, soft base first and then add the shine if this is the kind of look you're going for because it will just look a lot fresher and more modern. Okay, so just whisk that in, push, 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 whiskey, whiskey. Lovely. Okay, so now let's attack the eyes. I'm going to use a Modern Radiance Concealer by Vive. I really love these. And again, you know, these products aren't cheap. That's the difference in colour, just slightly lighter and nice and yellow, um, is that they are so pigmented that you don't need too much. If you feel like you're putting a lot of concealer around your eye, but you're not getting much coverage from it, but it's spreading a lot and there's a lot of movement of product, I prefer to use a, a stronger pigmented product and push it into the areas that I need the coverage for. Because otherwise, the build-up of product ends up sitting in your skin, sitting in your lines, and you end up getting a bit messy. You can't be precise about where you apply it. So I'm just applying that all around there, and then I'll come in with that around my nose. So this is light two, the shade I'm using. And just let that sit there. 
again pushing in with your ring finger is such a well it's a kind of like a nice little massage anyway um, but it really helps gets into the nooks and crannies again of course you can use brushes like this um, or then you can go in with a super super fine brush and just buff it in this is the 201 BK Beauty I love these brushes because I like art brushes I use a lot of art brushes in my kit because I find they're just a little bit firmer great and then I'll take the residue just over my lid now there'll be two sorts of powders that I'll use that feels really lightweight I might just put a little bit of balm on um, oh I've ordered the inky list uh, lip balm uh, it's taking ages to come I don't know why one of you lovely peeps said oh try this one I'd heard lots of hype about it it's apparently got lots of peptides in and apparently sort of like really lip boosting let's see I haven't tried it yet but I did order it thank you very much for that do love sharing all the tips with you all right so that is a very flat base please do not stop there now the bits that I hate that I'm going to change that the bits that annoy me about my face are my red nose um, so I'm going to take a firm brush now let me just take this beauty pie one this is the pro eyeshadow blending but I'm taking it because it's slightly tapered at the side and I'm just going to press around there now this product you can see it's well loved and used it's actually come from my kit this is the MAC face studio fix powder plus it's a foundation and powder in one so again like I was saying about the um, pigments uh, of my concealer and foundation the pigments are heavy and intense so they need a light fluffy brush for application but I can just cover the areas that I need to and just sort of like in the center of my chin here and you can see the difference in texture just changes it kind of lightening that really helps now for me I just need to soften and mattify that part of my top lip if you have oily skin and you really struggle this product by New Stick is really really good I was using it on an actress the other day it just comes like a little deodorant there I just take a little bit off and put it on my palette just squidge it on the back of your hand but with any shine that you might have it literally eliminates the shine but it makes your skin feel I think it's probably a lot of silicone in it not a lot there is some so I can feel how soft it is and I'm really sorry if I've got that wrong I will check I'll get Zoe to put a little text bar at the end to say no silicone yes silicone um, it's really really soft I'm only saying that I'm having conversations in my head while I'm talking to you because a lot of you don't like silicones I actually don't mind a little bit now and again not a lot because it becomes like a build-up but I don't mind just the odd dabble of silicone because it sort of softens my skin um, and I've really found that if your skin is slightly irregular um, that really helps um, to soften it so I like to put a little bit there where I would need my powder and then just a little bit over my lip there but I like to do it after my base because it just kind of smooths it slightly good so again obviously I have dry skin so I need to use a minimal amount of that but if you've got very fine skin and you you know you find that you just break out with all but you don't want the makeup on maybe you don't want any makeup on at all maybe you hate makeup you don't want that on your skin but you love a nice red lip this is a really great product because it doesn't allow makeup complete translucent works for all skin colors types um, now Tatcha has a new product called the serum stick really love this brand and I love the story um, so I think did I use it the other day I can't remember if I was talking about it it's really really nice this just gives you such a wonderful sheen and dewiness just around the outer side of your cheek the most softest most natural sheen you could possibly want I'm kind of taking you through stages because you know there's lots of shiny products the sheeniest one that I found so far is Enlighten by Rare Beauty this is oh god it's wonderful but they are literally like two extremes this is really hydrating really sheer really classy really modern and then that is really cool um, and really vibey 
Oh, look at all the adjectives being thrown out. I think you get what I mean. Um, so this is a lovely product to have in your handbag. I'm really now thinking, did I talk about this last week? Anyway, I'll talk about it again because I really like it. Really lovely in your handbag and nice on the lips, nice on the eyes or just anywhere where you feel a little bit dry. It's just a nice little pick me up, but it just gives that softness just around my fine lines around my eyes there. It just kind of softens everything and lets everything sit into place. Okay, so I've done my powder. Now this powder that, that I was talking about with the MAC, uh, when my skin was so bad, I used to literally push this into my face with a powder fuff. It is a product that I have loved and loved and loved and I've yet to find something that's as strong. So if there's anything that you want to conceal, using a liquid concealer and then this over the top gives you double whammy of coverage and it's so, so nice. Right, so now let me add a little bit of bronzer. Now this is the Diego de la Palma one and this is so soft. I'm gonna whiz it through with my 108 brush. Again, it's that lovely kind of tulip shape. Um, and I'm just gonna add a little bit to lift my cheek, just to have that shape there. I haven't used a cream bronzer, which I would normally wear because I don't want to lift up my lovely base. And I don't need to powder so much because the foundation, the hourglass foundation dries to like a very soft powder. So I can put powder on as you can see, and it doesn't lift, it goes on with a softness. And I can just use this little brush just to give myself a little bit of a frame keeping this area nice and light and lifting those cheekbones. And I'll probably just do like a little pop of color there. Just take that over the, really quite aggressively, but kindly, <laughs> um, over my lids, just to fill in that gap there, bring that down. Just so that doesn't look so white, because I'm gonna keep the makeup super, super simple. I just wanted to talk about the skin. So it's just quite nice to kind of go through that in detail. So bringing that lift up, which really helps to elongate and brighten this side of my face. Mm -mm -mm. So let me add now a little bit of the Rare Beauty just to show you the difference. Okay, so it comes in with this big doe foot. I would definitely use a palette or your hand first of all. And again, I want a light application, so I go in with a really light fluffy brush. This one is number 12, Casey Jane Hughes. Again, super delicate. Look how small this brush is. Just a little bit on my nose, just on the bridge there to bring it up. And then just a little bit here, just going over where I would do. Now I would choose, you know, depending on what I wanted, like do I really want to go sort of high beam or do I just want to look like I've got nice skin without too much of a makeup look? The choices are endless, right? But I'm keeping this highlight from under my pupil so I look directly in the mirror and then up. Don't bring it too far forward just because this particular look helps you to elevate your face and helps to really lift your cheekbones and lift your face, giving that kind of like brightening effect. Really lovely. So honestly, this, this brand is such a lovely range of, such a lovely formulation. Selena Gomez is so, so beautiful. And they seem to soften that slightly. And again, if I want to soften, I'll go back in with the foundation brush just to kind of connect that together quite nicely. One last little lift with the cheeks, I'm not going to do anything on the lips, just keep it nice and simple, is Loyal by Hourglass. I'm going to use my finger because it's going to be slightly firmer because again, this is really pigmented, straight underneath my pupil and then just bring it across. And this is a lovely warm, snuggly pink. Do you know what I mean? Because the jumper's all cosy, so it just feels warm, not too bright. And can you see the direction? I took the soft bronzer upwards, and I'm taking the blusher across. So you're kind of creating all these different sort of shapes on your face. Very subtle, have a play. Apply your blusher in maybe a different way than you've applied it before, and see the effect. Take a picture, ask a friend. Sometimes it's hard to see ourselves, isn't it? See whether we look better or not. And there we are, let's just put a little bit, because I can't, see now I want to just put like a lip liner on my lips. Maybe I will. 
Maybe this is enough. I'll just have a look. Can't beat a blush matching lip. That's fine. That's fine. Right, so there we go. All soft and cosy. Um, I hope I've taught you a few little things. Um, it's always nice to have a kind of a recap because we probably make, do our makeup so quickly. Anyway, but if I was sort of really trying to make myself look as good as I could, this is probably how I do my skin. Anyway, big, big warm hugs to all of you and uh, I'll see you next week.